Rapid 2023. The topic we are going to discuss today is metabolic acidosis. In this module, we are going to discuss the basics of acid-base balance, what is metabolic acidosis, the physiological effects of metabolic acidosis, anion gap, the various causes of high and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, and finally, the compensatory mechanisms of metabolic acidosis. Before coming to metabolic acidosis, we must know the basics of acid-base balance. We all know this equation. For every one molecule of carbon dioxide that combines with water in the presence of carbonic anhydrase forms H2CO3. This H2CO3 again splits into H plus and HCO3 minus ions. This H plus ion forms the acid component and the HCO3 minus ions forms the basic component. The relationship between this H plus and HCO3 minus ions forms the basis of acid-base balance. Whenever there is an increase in CO2 of the body, this in turn causes an increase in the H plus ions. This is called acidosis. Whenever there is a state of acidosis in the body, our body tries to eliminate this excess H plus ions by various mechanisms. This mechanism is called the buffering system. The various buffering system that act in the body is first the bicarbonate buffer, then comes the respiratory buffer and finally the renal buffer. The first buffering system that acts in the body is the bicarbonate buffer. The bicarbonate buffer act within seconds. The H plus ions combines with bicarbonate and forms H2CO3. Whenever there is an increase in CO2, the next buffer system that act is lungs. The lungs causes washout of excess carbon dioxide. It will take few minutes for the respiratory buffer to act. And finally, the system that act is the renal or the kidney buffer system. It will take few hours to days for the kidney or the renal system to show its actions. Whenever there is a state of acidosis, the renal buffer causes excretion of H plus ions. Whenever there is a state of alkalosis, the renal buffer causes excretion of bicarbonate ions. The kidney also causes resorption of bicarbonate and also helps the generation of new bicarbonate ions. Now we come to metabolic acidosis. Acidosis means there is a decrease in pH. This decrease in pH is due to an increase in the ion of H+. In metabolic acidosis, this decrease in pH is also due to a decrease in bicarbonate ion. So, metabolic acidosis, there is a fall in pH either due to an increase in H plus ions of the body or due to a decrease in bicarbonate ions of the body. Whenever there is a decrease in H plus ions or acids of the body, the various examples are diabetic ketoacidosis, lactic acidosis and the other causes we are going to discuss in the coming slides. The loss of bicarbonate is due to diarrhea is one such example. Whenever there is a metabolic acidosis in the body, the body tries to compensate it by respiratory alkalosis, that is respiratory compensation. That leads to carbon dioxide washout. And next, as we discussed earlier, the renal buffer comes into act. The kidney helps to maintain or maintain compensation with the help of S plus K plus exchanger. The S plus K plus exchanger what it does is that for every H plus ion that is excreted out of the body, one K plus ion is in turn pushed into the blood. So as a result, when the kidney try to compensate for metabolic acidosis, there is an increase in K plus ions in the blood that is hyperkalemia. The kidney also causes reabsorption and generation of bicarbonate ions. In a normal person, there is no accumulation of H plus ions in the body. 
whenever there is an increase in non volatile acids in the body the kidney comes into play whenever there is an increase in volatile acids in the body the lung or the respiratory buffer will act into play the importance of metabolic acidosis is that whenever there is an accumulation of this h plus ions in the body it has two major effects one in the cns and other in the cvs in the heart it causes decreased myocardial contractility it also causes sympathetic overactivity and resistance to catecholamines whereas in the cns the metabolic acidosis can lead to disorientation stupor and even coma in respiratory system we know it can lead to hypoventilation the mechanism of hyperkalemia we have already discussed now we come to anion gap the measured cations in the body plus unmeasured cations is equal to measured anion plus unmeasured anions if we rearrange this equation the measured cation minus measured anion is equal to unmeasured anion minus unmeasured cation the measured cation in the body is sodium and the measured anion in the body is chloride and bicarbonate so sodium minus chloride sodium plus chloride plus bicarbonate is equal to unmeasured anion minus unmeasured cation therefore sodium minus chloride plus bicarbonate is equal to unmeasured anion minus unmeasured cation that is called anion gap so anion gap means unmeasured anion minus unmeasured cation which in turn equals sodium plus chloride minus bicarbonate the normal value of anion gap is nearly 8 to 12 milli equivalents per liter whenever we calculate anion gap we have to go with corrected anion gap that is the corrected anion gap is anion gap plus 2.5 into 4.5 minus serum albumin this is because for each 1 gram per deciliter of albumin in plasma there is a change of 3 milli equivalents of anion gap as we know whenever there is a decrease in ph that is due to an increase in the h plus ions of the body the body tries to maintain electrical neutrality by various mechanism whenever there is an increase in h plus ions the body tries to increase anion that can be measured or unmeasured anions if the body tries to maintain the electrical neutrality with the help of unmeasured anion then as per our equation the unmeasured anion increases so unmeasured anion increases that in turn leads to an increase in anion gap because anion gap is equal to unmeasured anion minus unmeasured cation if the body tries to maintain the electrical neutrality with the help of unmeasured anion that leads to high anion gap metabolic acidosis and if the body tries to maintain this electrical neutrality with the help of measured anion that is chloride that it leads to normal anion gap or hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis the various ex examples of high anion gap metabolic acidosis is lactic acidosis ketoacidosis diabetes mellitus starvation alcohol associated methanol ethylene glycol and salicylates and para aldehyde now we come to the various examples or normal or hypochloremic metabolic acidosis the various examples are renal tubular acidosis diarrhea small bowel tumors and urethrosigmoidectomy now we come to the normal values in an abg the ph of the body is between 7.36 to 7.44 and we will take it at around 7.40 the bicarbonate range is between 24 to 26 the pco2 level is between 35 to 45 and we will take it at around 
a pH less than 7.2 is called severe acidosis and a pH more than 7.6 is called severe alkalosis. Now we come to the interpretation of ABG. Whenever we get an ABG, the first thing we have to look is the pH. If the pH is 7.40, it indicates it is a normal ABG or a mixed ABG. When the pH is less than 7.0, it indicates acidosis and more than 7.0 indicates alkalosis. The second thing we have to do is the component that has changed in the direction of pH. Whether it is the respiratory component that is PCO2 or the metabolic component that is bicarbonate that has changed in the direction of pH. In the case of metabolic acidosis, the compensation or the expected PCO2 is calculated by two different formulas. One is the Winders formula. This tells us about the expected PCO2 value with respiratory compensation in a case of metabolic acidosis. That is, the expected PCO2 is equal to bicarbonate into 1.5 plus 8 plus or minus 2. Or in other way, we can remember this like when there is a decrease in bicarbonate by 1 milli equivalent per liter, there is a corresponding decrease in PCO2 by 1.2 millimeters of mercury to maintain the compensation. This is the ABG of a 40 year old lady who is a known case of diabetes presented to our ER with a history of vomiting of one day duration. We took the EBG and first we look at the pH. The pH was showing 6.999, which indicates a severe acidosis. Then we look at the respiratory and the metabolic component that has gone in the direction of pH. So in the direction of acidosis, it is the metabolic component that has gone. That is metabolic acidosis. Now we have to calculate the compensation of this metabolic acidosis. So by Winder's formula, we have calculated the compensation and it comes to be around 13 to 15. Here the PCO2 value is 40. So this is an example of a compensated severe metabolic acidosis. And when we look, you can see this also indicates there is a high anion gap metabolic acidosis. And this patient was diagnosed with a diabetic ketoacidosis that is precipitated by an infection. So in this module, we discuss about the basics of anion gap, what is metabolic acidosis, the physiological effects of metabolic acidosis, anion gap, high anion gap and normal anion gap metabolic acidosis, and the compensatory mechanism of metabolic acidosis. Thank you.